to the site. In carrying out its duties, the DRP utilizes the guidelines, plans, and architectural principles of the Comprehensive Manual of Development Policies and or master plan, as well as other guidelines and regulations adopted in the law. Certain areas of the county were designated by the county council to require review by the DRP. The panel will provide a technical review of the proposed projects. I should note issues related to zoning, setback relief, environmental and stormwater management and traffic regulations do not fall under the purview of the DRP and are regulated through the appropriate agencies responsible for those aspects of the development plan review process. The panel consists of nine members. All are professionals with practical knowledge in the matters of design for the purpose of making recommendations on a particular project. Three members shall constitute a quorum. The attendance and comments of each member shall be recorded in the minutes, which shall be an open record and available along with all documents submitted to the panel for inspection and copying by the public. There will be an opportunity for community to offer comments and suggestions at the conclusion of the applicant's presentation. These comments will also be included in the written record of the meeting. When a speaker is called upon to speak, please keep your comments focused on design perspectives within your allotted two minute time frame. If you are speaking on behalf of a community group, you will get five minutes. Those individuals who want to speak should notify the county through the chat feature so that they know you want to speak and let them know for which project. The panel's recommendations are advisory on the hearing officer and various county agencies. Dispositions of the plans presented will be determined, be determined as either approved, approved with conditions, or a request for an additional presentation at a second meeting of this panel. I believe with that, uh, we're ready for our first presentation, which I believe is our residential project on Roland View Road. With that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to our presenter. Hello, this is Peter Radcliffe. Um... Peter, I'm sorry, before you start, I just wanted to mention that uh, this meeting is recorded. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, my name is Peter Radcliffe, uh, the principal of Radcliffe Architects. I'm here to present this project for 10024 Roland View Road um, in Towson. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Tom and Jeannie Maddox are the owners and the proposals of the project. And um, it's um, cover sheet, as well as all the documents you'll see, I'll walk you through the project and our proposed house and impact on site. And um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory and I think maybe uh, I'll just get started. Um, right here is just showing a, a rendering of the front elevation of the home and I'll be presenting all of the uh, plans and site plans and the elevations as we move forward to the project. Traditionally styled house, shingle style, <laughs> Architectural asphalt shingle roof, stone accents, and um, you know traditional window divided lights, and uh, we feel it's a very attractive home and a very suitable fitting for uh, this community and this uh, surrounding um, houses and neighborhood. Um, let's go to the next sheet, Marta, please. So the new home here again, it's just the front rendering. It talks a little bit. We've written up uh, the neighborhood out blends and we believe the styling is blending. Um, it's a 4,800 square foot house in terms of the finished square footage on the main two levels. Um, it's actually 44, 32 finished square footage and some square footage in the basement on 1.9 acre lot. And the intent is to take down the existing home and a dilapidated barn that exists and um, 
replace it with this house in a very similar position of the existing home. Um, and I just would say that in a lot of care is taken has been taken to um, improve the existing site and uh, it up to the point they purchased it a while ago and there's been modest changes to the site just in terms of taking the vines down and it just was not very well cared for up to this point and really not much has been done other than just caring for the existing trees that are extremely specimen in the about from the forest buffer zone and, and um, just generally speaking it's been just light modifications that have been made to improve the condition of the site. Um, we we'll go to the next sheet please. Uh, this is showing you the location of 1024 Roland View Road. Um, anyone please speak up if they're uncertain where the location is. And you can see it's highlighted in this in this sheet here. Um, I think pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, it's a DR1 zone. So the setbacks are being um, respected. Nothing is being asked for in terms of the any types of variances or exceptions for the setbacks. Um, next sheet, please. Just pictures of the contextual pictures of the of area, this driveway here, the top right image is the entrance drive off of Roland View. The house is located up behind these other two houses that you see here. You proceed up the driveway. Um, the lower view is just Roland View, looking up Roland View as you would take a left there into the driveway to the left. And then the top left again is a uh, just a visual aerial view again where the house is sited. Um, next sheet, please. These are images of the existing conditions. Um, the tell start top left, it's coming up the driveway and you can see the existing barn in the background. Um, the next image center top center is a picture of the end of the, um, I believe that's the garage, the end of the garage on the northern corner, northern end of the house. And to the right, uh, top right is uh, another image of the end of the, uh, it's the back section of the house, the garage is to your right, back of the garage. Lower left is the an open area that has some old bushes and some remnants of an old patio and some steps. Um, the image center, lower center is an image of the, uh, the current house. I would say that that's the left side of the current house facing south. Not facing west, excuse me, to uh, east. We're looking towards the east at the house, but the house is facing west on that side. And then the bottom right, um, looking back at the house from the west side, looking east toward the house. There's a door there, but there's also an entry door on the south side to your right. Next image, please. Um, I will note uh, just before I proceed, uh, if we could step back one image, please. I should note that um, top left, the barn, it's hard to see the condition that it's in. It's in there's a lot of water damage, a lot of deterioration structure damages. The intent is to take it down. Um, preservation of it, really not seeing any historic value of it, nor the condition of it and the conditions would require significant impact and investment to try to bring it up to to any type of living condition or stable conditions. Um, and then other just images of the house, the house interiors, the, all the electric and the plumbing is all very outdated and dilapidated condition. Um, the roof would need significant repairs and the house just doesn't suit the owner um, needs and desires for the property. And um, there is going, there has been a lot of effort to preserve, to use the materials and plans to um, donate the materials and give away the materials and really great, great efforts been made to try to put all of these materials it back into circulation. Um, we can move on now. So this is your, to your left is the existing site plan position of the house. I think it's pr pretty clearly noted. I, I don't believe, can you all see my um, cursor, my arrow? I don't think I have the right ability to do that. Um, if you place the, the, the center lowest portion of the home is right there. This this site, as you see the bottom right, is north. You can see the north arrow, so I'll refer to that. So the southernmost structure is your main structure. There's a breezeway shown, not shown, connecting to the garage just above it to the north. 
And then the barn is shown to the north in the northwest, and then the SRA condition, an existing septic system. The existing septic system is a process right now that the, the environmental has been involved and evaluated, and they're doing a perk, and they've evaluated the condition of the septics in great condition. The hope is that we would not need to replace it. Um, and there's process going through right now. There's additional SRA area available behind the barn that may be required, but we're in the process of uh, going through that with the uh, Department of Environment right now um, and have been for several weeks, if not months. Um, the proposed site to your right, you can see the footprint of the proposed house, not much different than the existing. It's a, an elongated house to take advantage of the Western view. In the rear yard, um, from the, looking west would be more of our rear of the property. To the east side, would we propose to be our front as it, it's maintaining and preserving a 50 foot setback? The driveway would go, go up on that right side. It's an elevated site on the east and it overlooks towards the west, quite, quite lovely and wonderful. The, there's a forest buffer, everything to the west being, being untouched unimpacted as well as the setback from the forest buffer not being impacted at all um and we've been uh, studying you know the best position to put the house we feel it's it's um you know appropriately located and sensitive and not impacting trees or impacting any of the neighboring property lines um so there really is no proposed trees to be removed and um there's a scattering of various shrubs and things that would ultimately have to be just replaced of some sort and we show a landscape plan moving forward as i'll show you in the four drawings um and the first floor master suite on the uh, south side entrance to the east center then kitchen that dining and then mud room just north of that and then the two-car garage just north of that um okay i think we can move to the next drawing this uh is the existing and proposed site plan there's a slight modification i'll get into moving forward that we we had the first presentation and then just the other day we submitted something uh modest retaining wall change and i'll show you that on forward drawings uh, again a further effort just to protect any possible impact the trees on that eastern side um i'll show you in a blow up drawing moving forward um, go to the next page this is our proposed landscape plan it's a general uh, located identity of the trees shade trees and plantings and and um, ground cover along the this was their first submission the next sheet will show you a retaining wall on this eastern side now it's the east side is now on the, the, the lower part of your sheet to the right is north and to the left is south of course and the top of the sheet is now west in this orientation um and you can see the driveway entrance current current where it is and then it comes up to the east in front of the house and gives you provides for um, a turnaround space into the garage so most of the house can look out on the elevated position looking towards the west and preserving the forest buffer and also preserving a lot of mature trees and plants and not impacting a lot of specimen oaks and various beautiful trees in the forest buffer are not being impacted um i think the next sheet would be helpful next sheet please right here you'll see on the the uh, bottom of the sheet now on our east side where i'm showing i didn't show the retaining wall before but we show it now and just after more thought and care, we just thought that a retaining wall that step up to possibly as high as five feet relative to these grades shown would be there to protect the trees along the bordering property lines. Um, just more sensitive and caring. There's been Mr. Maddox, Mr. And Mrs. Maddox have communicated with the, prop with the property owner on the east side thoroughly and they uh, collaborating and they want to together work with how they might improve. He's actually the, 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 the neighboring to the east has talked about trying to improve his conditions of his trees in that lower area as well. So it's been a very amicable uh, um, discussion with the neighbor at this point. Everybody, there doesn't seem to be any concerns or thus far we've heard and the eastern neighbor has been um, very supportive and very collaborative with Mr. Maddox, Mr. and Mrs. Maddox. Um, I think we go to the next plan. Now we're moving in just, again, this is the front elevation, the cedar shingle style house, um, party plank um, shingles are being uh, proposed with a uh, nice um, quality depth of trim and materials and depth of um, variety of the facade and character, we believe. Um, a front entry door in the center with a front porch, entry porch into a foyer. 
And then to the right, the dining room, this left is right of center, left of center is a, uh, a bedroom. And then right of the dining room is the mudroom entry in the garage, of course. Um, we're respecting the required height limitations as well as um, just again, we think it's well positioned on the site and, and attractive. Uh, next sheet, please. This is just showing grades of the property. The top image is a cut section cut through the property, uh, looking to the south, I'm sorry, yes, looking to the south, the upper upper drawing is a section looking through the house to the south. Um, just to the right of the house, you'll see kind of the, the level area that's part of it is in the forest buffer. A lot of the major trees are right along the slope line here to the right, um, at where the big drop down into the valley occurs all within the forest buffer. Um, the left side of this house, which is the east side, is just showing the existing conditions of this grades. Again, we're talking about using the um, a retaining wall to protect that slope in case there's any, um, you know, we don't want to um, we don't want to grade further into that hill, and that's why we've used the retaining wall to protect the lead to that. I'm not showing the retaining wall in this section. Uh, the lower section is a transverse section through the house, showing the um, positioning of the floors, and uh, this section would be looking towards the toward the um, to the east from the south um, shows you that to the right it shows how the driveway descends and then behind the garage and behind the barn to the left descending to the north um, next sheet please these are just more the technical architectural elevations the one rendering of the upper front facade on the east facade again is the same image we showed you before with renderings um, not showing color here, of course. Uh, this lower elevation is the uh, right elevation, which is the end of the garage on the north side. Looking back, there's an entry door. Um, just pretty simple. It's an unfinished attic proposed, possibly for some just basic storage. And uh, just again, we provided with window fenestration, so we believe it's attractive and well, you know, well designed and uh, attractive home. Um, I think the next sheet would be appropriate. This top elevation is looking from the west side, looking toward the east. Um, the center portion is a screen porch, and behind that are doors leading into the main living family room. To the left is a breakfast bay window with a kitchen and a breakfast table. To the right is the um, downstairs office. And then to the left of the breakfast room is the rear entry to the mud room. And to the left of that, towards the north side, is the back of the garage. The lower elevation is the elevation is most prominent as you drive up the driveway. Um, it's on the on the south side. That's what you would see as you pull up. And as you would pull up to the right of this elevation, you go to the right side, and that would be the front door. And to the left, you can see the projection of the screen porch on the west side. Um, again, we we made a great effort to really keep this this elevation attractive, embellished, and made an effort even to cover the basement required access with a porch and and railings and this feel that has a lot of uh, character and presents the house well with a one and a half story front. But not to, so it wouldn't be too grand in height. Um, again, all the materials are just the cedar shingle, architectural asphalt shingle roof, and um, a field stone material um, as well. And a copper roof, metal standing seam metal roof on the back of your uh, screen porch as you can see, both elevations, as well as an accent roof over the mudroom. And next sheet, please. Uh, this is your um, center part of this foundation plan is a modest finished area. It's really nothing much planned for it right now. This is a possible project area. And there's unfinished basements on either side, an unexcavated garage, and unexcavated patio and screen porch in the rear. Um, next sheet, please. Your first floor plan um, to the lowest part of the sheet is an entrance cover porch, come into a foyer, staircase going up, pass through under the stair into the great room and kitchen, open plan, dining room off to the right. Um, to the right, to the north is the side entries, front and back, mud room and laundry, and entrance to the garage. Left of center to the, to the south of the great room is a hall to a rear office. We call it a bedroom, it's really, intended to be an office there's a we have a 
bathroom is really for the, both the master suite. The intention could be a variety of uses and possibly um, opening up between the closets. So it could be a male and female separate bath. Um, but right now, this is how we have it planned. Um, pretty straightforward, I think. That's 29,953 square feet proposed first floor for unfinished square footage. Uh, next sheet, please. Second floor, we have a vaulted center with uh, an overlooking hallway to the left, front and rear bedroom, the shared bath, um, the hallway access to the shared bath and also an access from the rear bedroom. And then to the right, a master bedroom suite, and then access to the unfinished spaces of the garage and mudroom. Pretty straightforward, I believe. It's 1,479 square feet proposed, finished condition space. Next sheet, please. Sampling of the materials that are planned. It's a grand, to the top right is a grand manor architectural asphalt shingle roof. Uh, the center is the hardy plank individuals shingle limitation. Uh, to the left is the canyon squared fieldstone blend, uh, the proposed stone for the house. Sampling of the light fixtures and traditional character carriage style lanterns and floodlights in a bronze coloring. And then sampling of just a sample clope coachman garage door, just a visual of the garage door that we've drawn to get a feel for, again, traditional hardware and, and just a nice traditional look. Uh, next sheet, please. Well, these are just a list of your adjacent neighbors um, and the design review panel as part of the presentation requirements. Uh, next sheet. And maybe it, right? Yes, this is the end of the presentation, Peter. Okay, so I guess I would open it up to just questions, comments. Okay. Uh, Peter, thank you very much. Uh, Marta, do we have anyone signed up uh, to speak on this project from the public? No, so far we don't have anyone in uh, uh, John, I would like if you can remind if anyone would like to speak, they need to sign in for the chat window. Uh, and so far, we don't receive any requests. Okay. For this, uh, for this project. Okay. Uh, before Fran speaks, uh, Marta, do you want to give the staff report? Sure. So basically, we just have to be prepared our staff report based on comprehensive manual with development policies, um, Baltimore County landscape manual, and the Rocks and Rocky Road Lake Rolling Area Community Plan. Uh, and we have two conditions. Condition one clearly label on the plan all existing vegetation, including specimen trees and all proposed vegetation to be removed provide planting list for all proposed vegetation. And number two, provide details for the existing concrete wall and specify if any changes are proposed. And I believe applicant partially uh, already uh, responded to our comments. And if Pete would like, Peter would like to uh, Clarify that he more than welcome to do so. Sure, I'd be happy. Peter, are you going to respond to what Marta just said, or oh, should we move on? Um, can you hear me? Uh, we can. Thank you. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. I was speaking, but not I'm muted. Uh, can we go back to the landscape plan? I'd be happy to respond. That's great. Um, I'll respond to the second um, condition recommended by staff. Um, the to the left upper left of the screen, which would be to the southwest, 
there is a large retaining wall on the existing property line. That retaining wall is not planned to be impacted whatsoever on this project. I believe that's what the staff was referring to. It's actually a stone wall, not a concrete wall. And uh, there is absolutely zero uh, intention to modify it. The second um, request for uh, extensive list of all the existing and proposed um, landscaping and trees, as well as the existing and proposed that would be um, the existing that would be removed. My general response to them was that um, we're showing the landscape intent with the proposed. We do not have any intention of taking down any any trees. Um, and there's a variety when you saw the images. There's a lot of a tremendous amount of old boxwood beaten up and various bushes within in, in and around that western side just below the house. And it's just it's I my response was respectfully that I thought that it was rather challenging and, and somewhat premature to try to delineate that with certainty in that the landscape planning is still underway. There's a possibility that the um, SRA would need to be, have some expansions. Um, and that we believe that what we're showing here is in terms of the proposed intent for the landscaping would be you know, rather thoughtful and careful. And, and we just were asking for relief from that condition for approval um, as it's still underway and that the owner has shown tremendous care and concern throughout his ownership to this date over several months about caring for the trees with collaboration with an arborist with Carol Tree to preserve all the specimen oak trees on the, on the west side. There really isn't any specimen trees in, in the footprint of the home or any of our impacted areas. And really just that was my general uh, response. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fran Anderson, do you want to go ahead and start and do you have any feedback from the community? Uh, yeah, th thanks, Sean. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, another nice project. Um, did, did you actually have a meeting with Ruxton Riderwood? I didn't get any feedback from Peggy that the theater did not have a meeting with neighbors on your behalf. So I had a call from Hope Jordan, who I believe is replacing possibly Peggy, but I'm not 100% certain of that. I think she was speaking to me on behalf of Peggy. Right. And we had a conversation about the project and um, really nothing specific other than had I planned on doing a walkthrough invitation on the site and walking through the property. And I said uh, that we would accommodate that if that was something that was requested um, but that had not been formally requested and still had yet to be requested. Um, however, we, we I told her that we, the owner and myself would be happy to attend such a meeting. Um, I also offered that I thought that our PRP presentation was quite comprehensive and thorough and um, quite sensitive to the site and thought that it spoke for itself quite well. Um, so that's the extent of the conversations I've had with DRT. And then uh, I believe Mr. Maddox is listening. Mr. Mr. Maddox may be listening. I don't know if they have the ability to do the chat, but in speaking for them, I know that he's spoken to several neighbors um, to the extent of which ones and how many under the Eastern neighbor, for the most part, he's had a lot of collaboration with. And uh, of course, the notifications by the DRP process, you know, certainly is um, quite thorough and believe represents pretty well making efforts to communicate with the uh, neighbors. Yeah, yeah, I, I, have, I have no doubt that they, they have done that. Um, uh, but reacting to what's sort of in front of me, um, I, as far as the house goes, I think you did a great job. Um, um, I think it's lovely. I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, sort of the scale of it, even where it is and the neighbors uh, to the east, you know, um, is appropriate. I did have the same question about the wall, and I guess the the steps that are down there are those being removed as well. I, not that it really matters, but um, the brick. You mean the brick sort of steps in the middle of the lawn? And the roof? Yeah, I think that there is some possible interest in preserving them, but there is really they're they're in rather dilapidated condition. There's not proper drainage. All the bushes are dead. Right. I think the owner just would rather preserve the ability to to, to do what they wish with it unless there was some reason for someone to be opposed to it. Um, that's that's the current position is that it's still under study. Okay. okay. 
Um, one comment about the submittal. The only thing I'd say that might be missing, you know, I understand that first you did a good job and second you're kind of set back and you don't have a lot of immediate adjacencies, but you didn't provide any pictures of the adjacent properties, the adjacent houses. So contextually, you don't have a lot around you, right? I get that. But the one neighbor to the east in particular, that is the front of their house will be facing the front of this house. It would have been good to have a picture or two maybe of their house and maybe their view shed, right? Because that's the one thing that, that in your discussion about landscaping with the, 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 the uh, staff that I would reiterate was I was trying to figure out what is the current screening between the two existing, the existing structure and the neighbor? What are you removing? And even looking at my neighborhood, it's hard to tell what the trees are in it and on whose property they reside. So, so my only question about that was, you know, can you kind of describe and or provide some documentation of what the existing trees there are that are currently screening between the property, what you might be removing and what you might be putting back? And I understand your comments. I just don't have anything that that helps me with that visually by way of documentation or photographs that are effective. I did drive over there, so I know a little bit about it, but that's my concern. So I kind of reiterate the, the, the staff's concern about that elevation and the trees in that area. That reason. Peter, Peter, do you um, need me to answer the question? So uh, that's um, why. Uh, gentlemen, I think I hear Tommy Maddox. Tom, why don't Mr. Maddox, yeah, could you no, um, so, maybe uh, turn up your volume? Yeah. Um, so uh, I can I can answer. So this the the house adjacent to us uh, was built in 1871 and underwent a, a dramatic renovation about over the last 18 years by the current owners. Um, Ted and, and, and Mary Jo Weiss, who we've gotten to know pretty well, pretty quickly. Um, our house was built in 1952 when the Weisses bought the, the 1871 house on top of the hill. Uh, they, there was already a screen on the east property line and their west property line, our east property line. Uh, they enhanced the screen with Leland Cypress. Um, we have anyway, it, it's they're, they're, they can't see the house from their house currently. Uh, we have no plans to disrupt that at all. In fact, we're we're planning to extend that screen a little further to the north to to make sure that they they aren't impacted by anything that, that we do on the site. Okay, if there if there's some way you guys could submit a picture or something on the drawing, I mean, it, it just sure. I happy to I stand your, on the I take you ha happy to stand on the Weese's front porch and take a couple shots. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I take you at your word, but but I can only react to what I have and, and the sure. Weese's aren't here to speak. So right. you know. yeah. Um uh the only other question between the new retaining wall I shown is is there a retaining wall at the end of the driveway there by by the uh septic area? No, there's not. It's not. Okay. Um what's the what's the material the, if I missed it, I apologize. What's the retaining wall material? Um, well, I mean, right now it's not 100%. Um, I would suggest that there's, you know, a variety of choices matching the existing stone or doing something uh, a little bit more modest in terms of cost. The intent is to provide that no impact on that, on that, you know, on the grades to possibly impact any possible roof structures on that other property. Right, right. And visually, mostly be visible from the house side, not the neighbor side, anyway. Right? Yeah. So uh, I just thought maybe there was a retaining wall at the end of the driveway because the grades fall off a little bit there. Um, I guess not. Okay. Well, it's really at 309, and the rise is 309.5, so really there's not much to fall off. Right. Right. Okay. Um, no, as far as the house goes, I think it's great. I don't really have anything else on the house, so that was, that was it for me. Thank you, Fran. Uh, okay. Uh, go through, see if any of our panel members have any comments. Uh, Mr. Yusufaro. Uh, I am here. I, I have no comments. Uh, I think the, uh, the submittal is well done. Okay. Ms. Sauce. I also have no comments. I think it was uh, well done and I can you on your uh, trying to preserve and uh, to reuse any materials on site. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't believe Ms. Ra is here, is that correct? Uh, Ms. Ennis? I have no additional comments. It's a great presentation. 
Okay, Mr. D'Amico. My unmute button. Um, no, I think it's great. I uh, one thing I might discussion we've had. Maybe it would you could just put a note on the drawing that says that you're preserving all the trees. I mean, um, if that's what you're doing, uh, that might give some folks some reassurance that uh, you know, what's existing is it's not going to not going to be any different than what's existing. And um, it also might be helpful to just put a line around where the limit of disturbance is again just to sort of confirm you know, what you said mm -hmm. okay. the, well the, the grading shown as circles where the grades are modified so the extent of the limit of disturbance is implied by that but we would be required certainly to do that as part of our um submission for permit right right yeah my <laughs> Thinking on that is um, there's been a lot of discussion about you know existing trees and view sheds and those kinds of things. If there was a note on here that just said you're not taking any trees down, and this is I did provide a comment letter in response to staff that should be on record of some sort stated that to that effect. But we are happy to resubmit, you know, the plan making the same type of note. Okay. Ms. Bedwell. Hello, good evening. I think the submission, the architecture is, is great. It's a nice um, emulation of the shingle style. I did have one question on the architecture just because I could not um, see what was happening. So you have the, I think it's a manufactured stone veneer um, as a water table element, is that correct? Uh, it's actually, I believe it's an, a natural stone. Okay. Uh, if it was great. not done that way, the intent is to use a natural stone. Yes, it is a, a and it is a veneer, a six inch veneer currently. Okay, perfect. Um, and then you have, what do you have as a cap element on that? Is it uh, natural, free, stone, natural also. stone? Okay, good. And then um, as you move to the garage, the breezeway and garage, <laughs> it looks like the um, shingle comes down. What is below that element, that facade material on those, on those elements? Uh, if we could go to the elevation, I, I believe we, because it's so close to grade, um, we probably currently do not have plans to bring, we only have eight inches of exposed foundation as required for code. Uh, well, actually we, uh, the shingles go down at the top of the foundation plate and then we have grade eight inches below, it's quite close to that entry. So we were thinking we would not want to spend the extra money for the foundation thickness at that area, and it would be mostly ground cover and exposed. So, really mm -hmm. did not address it. If you want to, if if Marta could switch to the elevation, I think it's clearly defined. Yeah, I was just. I mean, I know in some historic shingle houses, the you have that scoop element at the foundation where the shingles come out. You don't have that here. I'm wondering if you do a band board, skirt board. <laughs> Of some dimension, like a 10 inch minimum nominal dimension, to finish that uh, where you don't have the stone base? Um, well, we were honestly, I've done that many times on many houses. Um, and I think that's an attractive detail, but it's not a detail that the owner and uh, myself had concluded was something we wanted to do on this house. It's appropriately flashed at the bottom. We personally have felt that we've liked the approach we've taken, honestly. <laughs> that's fine. Yep. But I think either is appropriate for a shingle, so I just w wanted to, to understand what was there. I have no further comments. I think this will be a lovely addition to this neighborhood. Great, thank you. Uh, I also have no comments. Uh, Fran, since this is a residential project, would you like to make the motion? Sure. Uh, I would move that we approve it with the condition that uh, the architect confirms the intent not to remove the trees and provides a couple of pictures of the neighbor's view shed into the property. This is Matt. I'll second the motion to approve with those comments. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? I have a clarification, John. This is to come back. Correct that we are approving with condition to come back to staff. That's correct. Yeah, I'll, I'll amend my motion to include that. Yeah, that's right. 
Very good. Okay, with that, do we have a second? Uh, this is Matt, I'll second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? If not, we'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, with that, this project is approved with comments. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and with that, we'll move on to our second presentation. Uh, just a reminder for those people who are listening, uh, if you want to speak as part of the public comment period for this project, please get your request into the county. Uh, per the directions that are on the left side of your screen. And with that, uh, 600 Reisterstown Road, you can begin your presentation. Yes, thank you very much. This is Stuart Darley with uh, the civil engineer, Colbert Matz Rosenfeld. I, I trust you all can hear me well enough. Stuart, is there any way you can turn your volume up a little bit? Um, yeah, sure. I'm not sure if that's going to fix it. I will try. I can try and speak a little bit louder. How's that? That's better. That's better. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, okay. This this project has been in front of the DRP once before. It goes back to 2012 when there was uh, uh, a presentation made. But this presentation today is for uh, some slightly different uh, details and and proposed work that we want to do at this time. Uh, Marta, do you want to go to the next page? So the existing building is a seven story structure. It, it, it's, it's a concrete facade. Um, it has an underground parking garage, uh, two levels that is in poor condition to say the least. With some other surface parking behind the building. Um, surrounded by Irving Place to the north, uh, Milford Mill and Slade Avenue to the to the south and Rushestown Road to the east, uh, the site zone BM, and it is a um, it's the the proposal. I guess if you want to go to the to the next slide, we can start in with the site plans. Uh, this is some contextual aerial photographs that shows the location of the site. Uh, the building uh, has the red marker on it. The zoning map to the right indicating that the site is zone BM. Next. These are some pictures of the existing structure that fronts on Reisterstown Road. As you can see, it's it's multi-storied uh, with the concrete coloring from the uh, slabs that are uh, the covering of the building. There's some glass uh, along the at grade at the sidewalk, and uh, it, it, there's a reasonable amount of sidewalk between the existing building and the uh, roadbed of Reisterstown Road. It's a traffic signalized intersection. And there's very little landscaping, as you can see, along this this frontage of uh, the site. Next, Marta, thank you. Here's another picture. It's looking more from uh, the one on the right is from looking from the Irving Place uh, Road, which is to the north. Uh, as you can see, there's a you know a large parking lot behind the existing I, building. And I need to interrupt you for a second. Yep. Um, some people are having trouble hearing you. So if you could just try and get as close to your microphone as you can. Okay, I'm right up on it. Okay. Um, and the picture on the left is uh, looking from the Milford Mill Slade Avenue side. Uh, again, looking at the back of the building, it's, it's pretty much an open parking lot behind the building. And there's approximately um, about 100 cars that can park on that rear parking lot. Plus the parking on in the garage gives, yields about 190 spaces total when it when it, when it was all functional. Uh, next slide. Again, this is just some street shots, uh, giving you some context of the site. It's surrounded by uh, you know heavily traveled uh, uh, roads, Racerstown Road, especially uh, Milford Mill gets a fair amount of traffic, and Irving Place is a more local road for some uh, old, older residential um, uh, lots, and some of which I believe have been converted for some commercial uses. Uh, 
And finally, the uh, picture on the upper left is the property that is right directly behind the project site. It's a uh, 110 Slade Avenue. You can there's a parking lot that serves that building that abuts our our property line, uh, as on the uh, south uh, westerly part of the project site. The picture at the bottom is a is a photo from our site looking across Milford Mill Road. As you can see, there's uh, you know impervious areas and development um, pretty much looking in that direction as far as you can see. And the uh, last picture is uh, again looking from Slate Avenue, looking down Slate Avenue to the to the west. Next, uh, this this slide is our existing conditions plan. It shows uh, Reisterstown Road there on the right side of the picture. North is kind of uh, up towards the top right corner. Uh, the existing building is shown, and you can see the parking garage is sort of in an L configuration. Uh, bordering the back of the existing building and then running parallel to Milford Mill Road. The other parking that's shown on there is all surface parking, and that's been uh, installed over the years as uh, the owner has acquired uh, smaller lots along that fronted onto Irving Place. This is the current ultimate condition that, that we're starting with. This is our existing conditions. Next. Uh, this slide uh, indicates the location of the uh, existing and proposed parking that's going to be occurring at the site. The, the existing parking structure on the left kind of shows again how I how I mentioned that the existing underground parking abutted the existing building and also had a uh, small L-shaped portion uh, along Milford Mill that was uh, also underground. Uh, a lot of all, all those underground parking spaces are, are going to be lost because of the condition of that underground parking garage. They're, they're gonna be replaced somewhat with the new parking garage that is gonna have uh, two levels above ground and one level below ground for a total of three levels. The entrances to the parking garage will be both on Irving Place and Milford Mill as a straight through drive. And then there will be an opportunity once inside the uh, parking garage to either go down or go up to get to additional parking that will serve the site. There will be 164 spaces provided. The requirement for the project is 169. So there's a five space deficiency and there will be a, a variance requested for that. Uh, next. This is our proposed conditions plan. It shows the, the uh, I guess, starting from Reisterstown Road there will be some new tree pits that will be incorporated into the sidewalk area. There's an existing sign that is approximately in the middle of the building. That's freestanding uh, monument type sign. It does have um, illumination. That sign is proposed to be totally removed and not replaced. There will be some small infill um, additions at the ground floor level. Uh, on the Reisterstown Road side, and the remainder of the building will, will be as is with uh, moving towards the parking lot in the rear. The uh, building addition proposed is approximately 20 feet wide. I think it's 19 feet, four inches to be specific and spans the entire length of the rear of the existing building. And from multiple ingress, egress doors uh, along that new addition, uh, you can walk out onto the parking lot and ultimately to, you know, within the parking garage itself, wherever you need to get to, to get to your vehicle. The upper level of the parking garage will start approximately 30 feet from the new wall, the new outside wall for the addition. So there will be light and air available to that first row of parking spaces right against the uh, new addition. Um, there's some planning for some retail in that in those space in those new space and and some restaurant space as well. Um, there will be some stair towers to get to the upper level and also down to the lower level. A dumpster is proposed as you continue towards the back of the site up towards the Irving Place side of the project. The access to the dumpster will be from Irving Place. Um, next slide. This is our landscape plan again, starting from Reisterstown Road. You can see the large circles are uh, uh, there to be deciduous trees of reasonable caliper. 
that can be planted in the tree pits with additional shrubs at uh, at the lower level. Um, there's one also on Irving Place, and then there's some other larger trees that are proposed along Milford Mill, in addition to uh, uh, you know lower shrubbery that will be combined to make these uh, parking garages uh, soften up a little bit with the uh, presence of the uh, plantings. And then as you get to the rear of the site, there's some evergreen plantings proposed to screen the building from those rear, those lots, those off-site lots adjacent. And, um, you know, the landscape plan will get more formalized as we proceed deeper into the county process uh, moving forward, working with Jim Herman. Um, the red dot, the red squares that you see on the plan are indications of lighting um, with the uh, parking garage basically filling most of the rear lot area, uh, these light fixtures will most probably be attached to the to the sides of the garage. They won't be pole mounted. And we do have a lighting photometric plan that we will, uh, that was presented as part of the package that indicate, you know, photometric foot candles at the property lines and along the right of way are approaching zero, which is desired. Okay, next, next. Okay, this portion of the uh, slides is starting to give you a feel for the improvements to the existing building, showing the additions on the bottom left slide and the uh, retail addition in the back and what the improvements are proposed to be for the existing building to try to bring it to life. And uh, I believe we have Rosie Kami from Macklin and Kami Architects that can talk some more about the architecture and how the the additions going to look and, and the materials and all those those things we can we can circle back to this probably uh, when, once we go through the book. Hi, this is Rosie Kahn here with Macklin and Comkey Architects. Uh, so the facade renovations that have been reviewed and approved back in 2012 have largely remained unchanged, and here we have some views of what we're proposing. Uh, the top two images are from the corner of Slade and Reisterstown Road, and the bottom right is from Irving Place and Reisterstown Road. Uh, to summarize the design, we're proposing to clad the ground floor of the existing elevation in a uh, stone veneer and installing an aluminum and glass uh, curtain wall system uh, around the existing um, office floors from second floor up to the roof deck. Um, the two existing stair towers on the Reisterstein Road elevation are going to be finished in EFIS to match the color of the stone veneer on the ground floor. Um, if we can move to the next slide. Uh, there are no changes to the color scheme and the materials that we had proposed back then. Uh, on the left, the two uh, tones of the stone veneer for the ground floor. The lighter color is the field uh, color. It's going to be a light gray granite. The accent is a darker greenish uh, gray. Um, the middle column are the two uh, tones of EFIS that we are considering on the stair towers, uh, which is going to match the field color of the stone veneer on the ground floor. The lighter color are the accent bands on the stair tower. And the Curtain wall is going to be a blue tinted vision and um, spandle glass with a clear anodized column wall, uh, curtain wall system. Uh, if we can go back to the previous slide, um, 12, yeah. Uh, there have been a couple of changes to what was approved back in 2012, and I'll briefly go over those changes. They are mainly on the Reisterstown Road elevation. The entry feature uh, on Reisterstown Road has been lowered, and this is in line with the comments we had received back in 2012. It has been lowered uh, by five foot. Uh, the EFIS detailing on the stair towers, uh, they have been um, simplified. The face of the EFIS is uh, much flatter than it was in the previous design. And we have removed the metal canopies on the ground floor that were shown above the 
storefront entrances above the vestibule entrance and at the top of the curtain wall. Um, if we can go to slide 14. Uh, on the left, we have the ground floor elevation. Here on three sides of the building, on uh, Slade Avenue, uh, Reisterstown Road and Irving Place, uh, we're proposing to take the face of the existing storefront and bringing it to the building line. Currently, the face of the storefront on the ground floor is um, eight foot to 12 foot recess from the building line. So we're tr trying to keep a solid uniform uh, line of retail on these three uh, sites. And at the back, uh, as we have mentioned, the existing parking deck is gonna be demolished. So we are proposing this narrow mixed use retail addition which is going to align with the finished floor elevation of the ground floor. Uh, this will allow us basically an on-grade uh, on access to the building from the rear, from the parking side. Um, if we can go back to 12, to the renderings. Um, on the lower left corner, uh, you have a view of the rear addition. So uh, we're extending the facade treatment along the rear of the building, uh, keeping the same materials and color scheme. Uh, the height of the storefronts and the height of the parapets remain the same. Um, here, uh, the parapet is around four feet above the surface of the roof that allows us to screen the new rooftop equipment from the road. Uh, we're going with uh, pretty compact heat, heat pump units to serve the rear addition, so um, that four foot plus parapet is going to be able to screen that equipment from, from the exterior. Um, if we can um, go to the last slide, Marta, where we're showing the exterior lighting proposed, the very last slide, I think it's 19. Yeah, uh, here on the upper right corner and the one uh, opposite from it are the two sconces that, uh, wall sconces that will be uh, installing on the face of the ground floor elevation, both on the existing building and on the uh, parking lot. And those are shown on the black and white elevations that are included in this uh, uh, presentation. I guess the last thing uh, I wanted to mention was uh, the signage. Uh, we're going uh, with the same signage that we had proposed in 2012 to comply with Pikesville revitalization guidelines. There are going to be um, gent metal letters that are going to be backlit. Um, they are, if we can go to the black and white elevations, 15, I believe. Yeah, the signage is going to be above the storefront, around uh, 13 feet above finished floor, center, centered at each storefront, and um, it's going to be those metal pin letter uh, backlits of signage uh, as described in the guidelines. Um, I think uh, Jeff can uh, start uh, explaining how uh, we're connecting to the parking uh, parking garage. Yes, this is Jeff Canelli with Moravito Consultants. Um, I think you can maybe go to slide, maybe it's 18. The elevation of the garage. Yeah, okay. So the garage is located on the west side of the office building has been said. Um, the upper elevation of the slide is the north elevation along Irving Place with the garage there on the right. Um, it's three levels with one below grade, one level at grade, and one above grade, having a total of the 164 parking spaces. The garage is proposed to be cast in place concrete 
and the exterior will be painted uh, to match the building stone veneer. The lower elevation on this slide is the south elevation along Slade Street, Slade Avenue. Um, the above garage structure will be separated from the building and there will be the two stair towers provided in the garage. Um, one at the north end and one at the south. Um, each stair tower um, will have a glass facade on these exterior elevations. And the, um, ex the wall sconces matching those of the building facade um, are proposed to occur on the concrete columns along these north and south elevations. There'll be four on the north elevation and four on the south. Um, and one will, you know, enter the garage, enter and exit the garage from the north along Irving Place or the south along Slade Avenue. Um, next slide. So the top of this slide is the west elevation and the garage is in the foreground. And this elevation is along these adjacent properties. Um, there's a trash enclosure that will be located in the northwest corner of the site, and it will include CMU perimeter walls with a gate leading towards Irving Place. And at the bottom of the slide is the east elevation of the garage, which occurs you know, about 28 feet off the existing office building. Um, here, the solid um, wall uh, that you see there does not really occur along this perimeter of the facade. It's actually um, a solid wall beyond that's along the garage ramp between the lower uh, to the upper level, which is more closer to the middle of the garage. Um, the top of the garage, or more, I guess, specifically the top of the concrete perimeter guardrails is going to be approximately 14 feet above grade. And each of the two stair towers are going to extend approximately 20 feet above grade. Uh, this is primarily an open air garage, except for the lower level, which will be mechanically exhausted. I think the next slide. Uh, yeah, so that was it for the garage discussion. Yeah, this slide shows the photometrics from the uh, lighting contractor to indicate the foot candle disbursement from the from the lighting that's been proposed. And I believe 21, I think slide 21, which is next, Martha, I think we've already gone through so that. Yeah, that's the lighting fixtures. So I believe that concludes our initial part of the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, Marta, do we have anyone signed up to speak yes. in the community input portion? Yes, we have uh, Mr. Alan Zuckerberg here. Alan, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, do you want to, do you want to see me or does that matter? Uh, we would prefer to see you. Okay, let me see if I, can you see me now? Uh, we can. Okay, uh, thank Marty, you. Marta, is Mr. Zuckerberg speaking as an individual or representing a community association? Uh, I believe representing community association, and for that, you have five minutes. Thank you. So I'm Alan Zuckerberg. Uh, I'm the uh, president of the Pikesville Communities Corporation. We are a coalition of homeowner associations, and that and and part of this or uh, Pikesville Commercial Corridor is encompassed in our designated geographical area. I'm also here just in case the record is required in my individual capacity as well. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I appreciate it. And thank you for the public service that you all render on behalf of the communities. Uh, this uh, as a preliminary matter. I want to just say that my participation in that of Pikesville Communities Corporation in this WebEx hearing should not be construed as consent to to, uh, to the hearing or to any other hearing that the county sponsors by WebEx. Having said that, um, I want to uh, reiterate that this matter came before the planning, the design review panel in 2012. And uh, one of the things that the engineer referred to was the sign. I think he called it a, 
monument sign. Uh, I believe it's a pylon sign, and I'm and we're appreciative that it's supposed to be removed of this current plan. One of our concerns is, and I don't know if it's within your jurisdiction, and that is that, um, as you can see, this we were before you, or the, the uh, building owner was before you in 2012, and major substantive changes were not made in eight years. And I don't know if you have authority to put a time cap on your approvals or whatever you may do here, but if that's within your jurisdiction, we would appreciate it. Um, I've spoken to the sign of uh, the 2012 proceedings. Um, the next thing I'd like to speak about is whether, and I see from 2012 proceedings, there was an issue back then about whether the bottom of, of the construction was in conformity with the village concept as stated in the design review guidelines. And uh, I leave that up to you, just point it out for your uh, consideration. We are also concerned about left turns being made out of Irving Place onto Reisterstown Road. Uh, Reisterstown Road is a major artery, as you, I'm sure you're aware. And um, we anticipate a lot of traffic coming in and out uh, of that area, or at least an amount that may be worthy of consideration as to whether there should be no left turns coming out of Irving Place. We did have a conference with the engineer and the owner yesterday morning, and uh, the owner did say that a left turn should not be a problem coming out onto Ford Mill. Um, and I understand that perhaps the engineer is going to speak with County Roads about that. We are concerned about a left turns going into uh, the opposite lanes of traffic coming out of the building. Uh, the next concern that we have is, and this was raised in 2012, and I believe the renderings that we saw in 2012, and certainly these renderings do not show the, the um, antennas that are on the rooftop of this building. There are multiple antennas, and we hope um, that you will all put in, you all put in something that uh, restricts the, the view, require some kind of requirements that the view of these antennas <laughs> can't be seen from street level because, again, we're in the Pikesville Commercial Corridor. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to discuss was uh, the landscaping. If there's some way, I, I understand it, as long as it conforms with the landscape manual, then that's pretty much, I guess, what you're bound by. The question is, is whether that the manual only requires immature growth to be put in and then we all have to age before it the uh, beauty that comes from the landscaping uh, matures and we see it. So if there's some way to, to regulate what, the, what the, uh, the growth is rather than just new growth, we would appreciate it. Uh, again, I want to point out that I, we leave it up to you as to whether the first floor conforms to the design guidelines and uh, keep in mind that this project is a stone's throw from the Parkville Armory which uh, I hope that you're all aware is, uh, is the subject of, of a committee and has been the subject of a governor's commission. And we in Pikesville look forward to major change uh, and the upscaling of that armory and this building will have a major, I think it will be impacted in a major way in a, in a positive way and a valuable way by the uh, changes made, which we hope will be made to the armory. So, uh, having said that, there's, there's nothing else that I have to say. I appreciate your time. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, thank you very much. You're welcome. Marta, uh, since I believe he was our only public speaker based on uh, feedback, uh, do you want to go over the staff report? Sure, thank you, John. So the staff report is based on comprehensive measures of the Pikesville Revitalization Plan, uh, Pikesville Commercial Revitalization Guidelines, and Baltimore County Landscape Manual. Uh, in terms of site design, staff recommends approval of site design. 
in terms of form and image, staff recommends approval of the form and image. In terms of open space and landscape design, uh, staff recommends approval of open space and landscape design subject to the following conditions. Um, condition uh, number one, provide details for the proposed sidewalk pavement and tree pits around the office building and clearly indicate the existing tree pits around the area that are to be removed. Provide seating number two, provide seating bike racks and trash receptacles along Reisterstown Road. Number three, provide enclosure details for the proposed dumpster and the existing transformer on Slate Avenue, Milford Mill Road. Number four, provide a detailed landscape plan with a list of all proposed plans that meet condition D for parking structures uh, of the Baltimore County Landscape Manual, manual uh, page 27, consider native and adaptive plans. Number five, based on the Pike for Commercial Digitalization Guidelines, page five, uh, a 42-inch garden wall in combination with shrubbery should be included to screen a bay of parking space that is located outside the parking garage from Slate Avenue, Mill for Mill Road and Irving Place. In terms of street parking and circulation, staff recommends approval of streets parking and circulation subject to the following conditions. Number one, ensure connection of the proposed concrete walkway uh, in front of the proposed addition to Slate Avenue, Milford Mill Road, and Earring Place. Number two, improve the existing sidewalks on Slate Avenue, Milford, Milford Mill Road, and Irving Place to enhance pedestrian connectivity. Number three, prevent crosswalks that uh, have construct contrasting color to adjacent paving and at the, at the exit points of the parking garage. In terms of signage and lighting, staff recommends approval of signage and lighting subject to the following condition. Number one, provide signage details for the proposed addition, including material, size, color, and illumination. Number two, label location and provide signage and direction signs that are included in the parking garage. Number three, clearly label the lighting location for parking fixtures and parking tax fixtures in the proposed parking garage. Number four, clearly label building walls consists on the elevations of the office building and link the uh, code names to the images of the wall scones type on page 21 of the presentation. Number five, provide street lamps along Riser's Riser Sun Road uh, and their details. And in terms of architectural design, uh, staff recommends approval of architectural design subject to the following condition. Number one, link the code names of the proposed materials for building facade to the proposed material images on page 13 of the presentation. And number two, show how the equipment on the rooftop of the audition will be screened. And that uh, concludes our staff report. Thank you, Marta. Uh, I do have one question for staff before we start having discussion from the panel. Uh, my understanding is prior approvals of the DRP do not have a time limitation. Uh, and in the absence of major changes, the prior approvals are still applicable. Uh, is that correct, Jennifer? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So our primary focus tonight is the minor changes proposed on the main building, uh, including the small, I guess, ground floor expansion towards the parking garage and then actually the parking structure itself. So with that, I will open it up to comments from the panel. Uh, Ms. Bedwell, would you like to go first? Yes, thank you, John. Um, so good evening. I understand this uh, went 
um, in front of ERP back in 2012. I did not serve at that time. Um, I do note that um, in addition to the, the bump out on the ground floor, there are definitely some facade changes that I'd like to address. Um, noting that the, I think the original intention of the building, if I have to discern it, this is a difficult building to, uh, to renovate and I applaud um, some of the moves that um, help to articulate this building further. I think it is a departure from its, you know, ribbon glass um, read. I do think the curtain wall addition is successful. Um, I think the prior submission, though, had some uh, fine level details that helped to um, tie this building all together. And those were the fin elements, um, the breathalays and other elements, which helped to bring, I think the intent was this you know, use that curved corner and some of the tower elements to move into more of an art deco read, if I interpret that correctly, um, with the, you know, the use of materials on the ground floor uh, seem to have a cohesiveness, this new elevation stripped of some of those details on the upper levels in particular, such as the fins, seems to try to rely on EFIS, um, kind of blocking, blocky frames of EFIS to try to achieve that same look, but it, it really, in my opinion, falls short of that uh, without those details. Um, I, I also wonder, the um, this is a question, so the first was a comment, um, the, the next is a question. Um, do you have do they? Do you have a um, some type of shelter provided at the front entry doors? I understand that some canopy element was removed. I'm not sure if there's still if somebody approaching the building at the main front doors, if there would be any shelter provided over overhead. Uh, this is Rosie Kamki. Uh, there is an entrance vestibule, and on both sides of the vestibule and the stair towers, you would have uh, the roof of the second floor. Okay, if so we there is some shelter as you open the door to go into the building now, even with that other canopy element removed? On, on the storefront entrances, you mean? Yes. What I'm looking at is the, the front view. Um, at the main entrance to the yeah you would enter directly to the vestibule and then into the building maybe if we go to the ground floor plan you can have a better idea i think it's uh, slide 14. yeah so this is the entrance vestibule Right, but is there anything, so if I'm standing there at the entrance vestibule opening the door, is there anything You don't anything have anything overhead? about that. No, you don't. No. I also, I mean, as a person who likes to, you know, have a, have a moment, we always require, you know, a minimum dimension of coverage over entry doors, major entry doors. It's a little bit disappointing to see that gone from the previous design, I believe. Um, you know, with that, I'll, I'll turn it uh, back to you, John, for other folks' comments. Thank you, Cecily. Uh, Mr. D'Amico. All right. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm not 100% clear what, um, what, what I'm allowed to comment on or not relative to what was proposed last time. Um, my apologies for a second. I got a vacuum cleaner going on in the background. Can I, hold on a second. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm back. Um, so, yeah, help me out here a little bit. I have some questions about this site. Um, What's happening in the zone between the parking garage and curving place? Is there um, a new curb and gutter? Is there sidewalk in there? Is there, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, and, and if that was approved previously, and 
you know, I, I understand that. I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Yeah, John, this is Stuart. I, I'll try to respond to that. Right now, between the parking garage and the right-of-way line of Irving Place is about 14 feet. And that area will be green. It will be a landscaped area between the sidewalk that runs along the building addition in the rear to the entrance to the parking garage. That's a that's a, a 14 foot, almost 15 foot wide by. Um, scale it real quick. About about 95 feet, 14 by 95, 15 by 95 area. That's going to be green and and landscaped to, to again to soften that wall. And then is there a sidewalk? There's a sidewalk on Irving Place uh, in the public right away uh, between the curb line and the right away line that'll basically fill up the uh, space between the curb line and the right away line. It's a, okay. it's a five foot walk. Yes. And that's a new, a new, uh, it's a whole, whole new curb and gutter, a, a new poured uh, concrete sidewalk that's five feet wide and then um, landscape between the sidewalk and the garage. Is, am I understanding that correctly? That is correct. And then in front of the uh, building that's face, the office building that's facing, um, I'm assuming that's going to all be concrete and your treatment. Yes. Right? Yes. Once you get to the building, it's essentially a concrete walk to get to the doors on the side of the, of the building and also just to walk around towards Racerstown Road. Okay. And then are you doing the same thing on the, um, Slade or Milford Road side? Yes, it's a there is um, l less area available for landscaping just because of the uh, transformers and uh, the uh, entrance drive off of Milford to the garage area and parking area. We will have a sidewalk that links to the existing walk along Milford Mill Road to allow you know people walking along Milford Mill to get to the the, the new addition. Okay, so new. I don't know what existing. It, it looks like there is an existing. Um, garage entry is that going to be demolished yes and that would be new will that be landscape area or will yes that be... that'll be landscaped area the only the only way to drive into the parking area to get to the upper and lower levels of the garage is the basically a straight through driveway from irving to milford mill which is located towards the rear of the property that's the only way to get into the parking areas uh, all right so will you be building a new curb and gutter then on the um, Slade or Milford Mill side as well? Yeah, there will be some old entrances that will be closed and they'll have new curb and, and sidewalk installed. And um, where we are transitioning between Milford Mill and Slade, there's some existing walks that will be removed and new walks uh, installed to, con you know, to keep a continuous pathway all the way uh, along that road frontage. Okay, so keep this slide, um, Marta. This is this is great. So there are two tree pits on the um, I don't know which way north it is. I guess on the Slade or Milford Road. Yeah, that's Milford Road and, and Slade. They kind of right. are combined. Yeah. Are those going to stay, or are those being removed? The tree, the two tree pits, and then there's, I guess the tree pits on Ricer's Town Road are also being demolished and replaced with four tree pits, and then it looks like one more new tree pit. Um, on the Irving side, is that right? Yes. yes, that's correct. We did relay out the tree pits along Reicherstown Road to make the new tree pits larger. And um, the two tree pits that I think you've discussed, uh, we're mentioning a, uh, near the inner, on the Milford Mill Road side near Reicherstown Road, those are currently slated to remain. And then the tree pit on the Irving Place side is again to replace some smaller tree pits on that side that are being removed and, and this new one will be better positioned to keep the, the a larger area of continu continuous walkway. So the two tree pits on the Milford Road side uh, will remain. Currently, yes, that's how that's okay. proposed to remain. And then, but all the others are going to be demolished and replaced with these one, two, three, four, five tree pits. Correct. And will they be all the same detail as the Reisterstown Road? Uh, guidelines call for the, the brick, yes the brick banding and everything yes. okay yep um and i think okay that's all good i do agree with the county's comments about a detail for the transformer is that a are you, are you putting a screen wall around it or what is that we're looking at there yeah there's there's already a wall there i don't know if one of the 
slides of the street street views might show it better if Marta wants to search back, but there's an existing wall around those transformers that screen them now. And is that to remain or are you that is to remain? It? Yes. Okay. Um, is there, are there any uh, existing residential occupied homes on Irving Lane or are they all been converted to commercial? I don't believe they're all commercial. I believe there are some still residential dwellings along that oh, okay. Irving place. Yes. Okay. So, um, I think to be sensitive to that, how we're treating the garage on the Irving Lane, Irving side is is important. Um, so you got you know landscaping in there. Is the is there a wall on the garage um, that's uh, on the first level and the second level? It's hard to tell from the elevations. That would block you know, headlights from you know somebody driving you know pulling in the garage and shooting their headlights into someone's house. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, I, I I understand. I I believe there is, but I'll I'll reach out to Jeff to see if he can respond to that. I believe there is like a knee wall or maybe slightly taller wall along the along the at-grade parking spaces. That and I, I right, it's like 27 inches high, just a normal yeah. guardrail. Okay. Okay. It, it sounds like staff is recommending the one on the lower level one be 42 inches tall. Um, if, I'm, if I understood the comments correctly, and then the um. I was looking at the photometrics, it looks as though you have um, created a situation where you're not getting any additional spillover light onto the outside the right of way. Was I seeing that correctly? Yes. Again, for residents, is the light fixtures have a cutoff and they're shooting down and they're not shooting into a neighbor's house. That you know, I think we just want to be sensitive to that. So. Um, I thought I saw in some of the renderings planting and or planter boxes along the facade. Is that or am I miss is I yeah, some of those. Is that is that accurate? Is that what you plan on doing? It's nice. I don't see it in your landscape plan. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm hesitating. I don't know if the rendering is is reflective of the proposal for the landscaping along Reicherstown Road. With the tree pits and the addition, we have to be careful not to squeeze the sidewalk down too much with with planters. But we we could look at that and potentially do that as well. It adds, you know, some nice you know texture and variety along the streetscape. You know, um, Agreed. So, uh, John, at this point, I just had some questions to try to better understand what's going on, and I think you answered them. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Matt. Miss Ennis. Hi, um, I have a kind of a couple comments uh, that align with both what Matt and uh, Cecily described uh, from the standpoint of um, just the exterior architecture. Um, and kind of some of the detailing that really feels like it wants to be uh, an art deco building uh, and is seemingly some of that detail has been removed based off of the 2012 submission. However, I think um, there could be some opportunity uh, with lighting uh, and text um, with the uh, possible tenant um, signage that could enhance um, that could enhance the base uh, first floor entry experiences uh, for those tenants. Um, so I would ask that that be included as part of the package. Um, I see a lot of different fonts and why they seemingly all look that they're about the same size. I think the font should be a little bit more consistent um, throughout the entire um, perimeter of the building, regardless of tenant, um, tenant requirements. Um, and that that would be it. I agree with uh, staff comments as well. Is that all you have, Kelly? It is. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Ra? Uh, yes. Um, let's see if my camera's going to work. Good evening. Um, I think the others have voiced similar concerns already, but 
Uh, I think the major concern that I have for the plan is the lack of pedestrian connection and the consideration for the, the existing residents on the Irving side, especially. Um, and I think the garden wall uh, recommendation from the panel, the report, the staff report, is that addressing the um, potential disruption from the parking lot for the, the existing residents? I wasn't 100% clear, so that's a question for Marta and others, um, the staff members, perhaps. I just wanted to get clarification on that. Um, and the other one is just how um, the lack of shading devices um, along the perimeter of the building and um, whether the vegetation could be a little bit enhance perhaps to um, uh, make the pedestrian and, and residents experience a little bit better. At the moment, as um, Mr. Darley mentioned as well, it's a lot of paved spaces. Um, it just doesn't look very, it, it looks a little bit hostile <laughs> and I think it could be improved. Does the developer want to respond to the questions related to the garden wall and uh, landscaping along uh, Irving and Milford Mill before I move on to the next comment? Um, I think the only response I could give is that we can continue to work with the, the county reviewers on the landscape plan when we get into that part of the project. I don't see any reason why we couldn't provide the uh, screen wall for the neighboring uh, owners, neighboring properties. And I believe that we've done a reasonably good job in connecting the um, Irving Place residential and, and commercial uh, buildings to Rice's Town Road with the, the additional concrete sidewalk along there that, that right now is, is fairly lacking. Okay. I, I do have a question. Well, never mind. I'll go on to the thing. Uh, Ms. Saws? Uh, any comments? Yes, thank you. Um, I think a lot of good comments have already been raised by um, the group. Uh, one comment uh, I noticed on uh, Google Maps that the uh, streetscape is very sad looking indeed. Um, and I I hope that uniformity of the streetscape around the entire building will be taken into account. It looks like the existing tree pits are raised, have little raised curbs, so that's a trip hazard. Um, and just trying to be more pedestrian friendly, um, I, I would hope that all the tree pits are uniform, um, whether there's planting in them or ADA compliant grades, you know, giving generous space for the trees to grow. Um, to some maturity level, as a urban environment, it's very tough in the trees and landscape. I would also recommend looking into irrigation for the planters specifically uh, around the building. That's a really tough environment for, for plants, but um, if it's possible in, in the tree pits also, just to ensure the landscape um, survives and reaches some sort of maturity. You know, the building is on a corner, it's very iconic, um, it can be seen from multiple views. So I think I commend you for adding landscaping to, to a pretty sad barren building already, but just trying to keep it alive and, and trying to make it complement the architecture would be great. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yusufero. Uh, hi, good evening. I'll, I'll try to keep this short. I know we're getting late into the evening. Um, I think fundamentally, um, th this is a hard package to follow. Um, there were a lot of um, non-colorful plans. Um, I, I think a site landscape colored rendering would 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 tell a story here. Um, I didn't see one. And and from a you know, a, a broad perspective, you know, you know, you're proposing a new garage. Um, 
I, I don't even see a rendering of, of a garage and I, I, I don't even know what it's going to look like. So I, I find some significant gaps in this package and, um, and they're my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Okay. So I guess I get to go last. Uh, I do have some questions uh, picking up on what Joe just uh, brought up regarding the garage. Uh, can we go to the elevation sheets that show the garage elevations? Uh, that's not, that's the. Thank you, Marta. Uh, question for the developer. So if I understood from the presentation, correct. The cast in place concrete of the garage is going to be painted to match the stone. Of the. Uh, facade of the renovated building. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, uh, what kind of coating are you planning to use? Um, I don't think we've gotten to that detail yet. Yeah. So in, in looking at these elevations, and I, I recognize it's hard to see with the size it is on the screen, what is the detail between what is identified as the slab edge, the screen wall above at the upper level, and then the actual condition of the top of the wall. Um, well, there's different reveals in the exposed concrete, um, or there will be. Um, you're right, that detail is not really clear. Um, at this level, um, there's not a whole lot of um, in and out transition. It's mostly done with reveals and there'll be some slight different in concrete finishes. So as we look at that elevation, the slab edge, the wall, the columns, everything is in the same plane. Correct. I guess echoing Joe's, uh, Mr. Safaro's comment, the uh, the biggest change in the project has the hardest to understand drawing, which makes it difficult. Uh, all my other column comments kind of tie back to what other people said, so I'm not going to repeat them. Uh, for the developer, uh, a question was raised by a panel member. I believe it was Ms. Bedwell about the, I guess, the elimination of the fins and some of the shading devices that were shown in the 2012 uh, design. Uh, is there a rationale for that change that was made? Well, unfortunately, uh, I don't believe anybody from the developers uh, side is here to respond to that. I can only say that we will bring that issue back up to them and find out if there was a what the reason was and if we can explore going back to something like that. I believe Rosie may. I don't know if Rosie has anything she could add to that. She may have had some well, conversations about it. Well, the conversations about it is the the project has been value engineered a few rounds uh, and we were trying to simplify and eliminate uh, the details but still keep the design intent uh, the metal canopies uh, i agree we can add the metal canopy at the reisterstown entrance and uh, but uh, most it was something that basically got value engineered on the ground floor. What about the uh, 
things that were up high, the vertical elements on the stair tower, and then there was the horizontal screen just below the, uh, what looked like the top floor of the building. The horizontal screen also, it was basically, we eliminated most of the metal canopies at the top floor and the fins, um, as I say, we try to simplify it as much as possible and stay within the budget restrictions for the project. Okay, thank you. So with that, uh, we're going to need to have someone make a motion. Uh, I think if the panel is in general agreement with the staff comments, we should in a general sense include that in the motion as well as anything specific that might be made. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion? John, this is Cecily, so I'll be brave and volunteer. This is, might be a little bit lengthy. Um, so as I understand it, um, you would like us to recap everything from the staff report that we'd like to embed within the motion, or can we make a universal to, to say, uh, including those items um, suggested by staff and then add to that only? Yes, that's exactly your second approach was what I was thinking we'd have a universal reference if there was something in their comments we disagreed with i think it it would be easier to eliminate that comment i don't i don't want to restate every comment Perfect. that we already have a written document that memorializes that uh, thank you you know we did that at the last meeting and i think one of the things in you know in prior meetings you know going back a couple of years sometimes we neglected to to reference some of the staff comments in, a, in an easy fashion. So thank you, Cecily. Very good. So I will then happily make a motion. Um, <laughs> and, and my motion is going to be that this project comes back. Um, we, can, we can debate that, but the motion is to have the applicant come back uh, to address uh, the staff comments. And I don't suggest any changes to those in addition to showing a rendering um, of the garage, uh, I am concerned and would like the applicant to address the what John was referencing, the paint on the garage and have a, an adequate response to um, what type of paint if used or if it could be concrete um, with the concern of wearing over time um, with the an additional um, rendered streetscape landscape plan um, to clearly show areas of planting as well as noting as staff mentioned um, the planting pits to be removed uh, distances for sidewalks um, as a rendered plan um, to that the applicant uh, study further the reintroduction of some canopy and fin elements um, at the, while we appreciate the value engineering exercise, um, but at the main entrance and particularly on the um, upper portions of the stair towers, not lose those elements that help to articulate the building. That's the end of the motion as I see it. Cassily, when you said come back, you mean come back for another meeting or is this yes, a condition? CRP? Because I think there are, are enough things here that are not fully um, shown uh, to, to Joe's point and I believe to John's point as well. And some, um, you know, a departure from the previous submission that was approved that warrant uh, another meeting.
Um, so Mr. Schneider has been chatting on here um, regarding some things that you're speaking to. I can read them or if you'd like to see the chat. Um, uh, you know, I don't, would you like me to read them or do you see them in the chat? Mr. Snyder, you are on as a panelist, so if you'd like to unmute yourself and speak, you're welcome to do so. Yeah, well, I appreciate, you know, to answer that, I mean, I can see the the chat, Jennifer, um, and I think we're in discussion at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, in my opinion, as a design professional, I think what stood as an approved plan previously by DRP has changed to an extent in the comments tonight from the DRP panels warrant a return. And while we're not trying, I, I personally am not trying to add vastly to the cost and understand that some VE measures are needed, I think this has been stripped down to a point where the, the design intent is not coming through. So um, they don't have to be heroic uh, reintroduction of every single fin and brise soleil that was shown on the building. But I think there needs to be a step back to include some of those at, at pointed locations that I noted. Okay, is there any discussion on that particular item with other members of the panel? The only thing, John, I would add to what Cecily suggested is that for the things that she noted, it would be helpful to have labels, notes, and dimensions for those things, for those items. So Jennifer, you asked the question, did the developer want to speak uh, with to just elaborate on what he wrote in his chats. I, I did not could not determine if he unmuted himself or not. Um, I see that he's here. We've made him a panelist so he can unmute himself. If you'd like to speak, Mr. Snyder. Can you hear us? And I can unmute uh, Mr. Snyder if he needs help with that. Uh, I don't know if he does or not. I think he just did. Okay. I was not allowed in as a panelist. For whatever reason, I was invited to a 1.30 meeting instead of the 6 p.m. meeting. So I had to re-register as a partic as a attendee. In any case, we were trying to beautify the building, not jump through hoops. The garage is in terrible shape. The prior owner didn't put any money into the building whatsoever. And I appreciate that everybody here has their own taste and their own art desires. It was never an intent to make this an art deco building. There was a difference of opinion between the architects and the owner, that would be me, as to things like the fins and other types of screening. We want it to be beautiful. You could tell from the, the renderings that we are putting millions and millions of dollars into this building, but we want it to look very beautiful and very nice. But, and like I said, everybody has their own opinions. DRP, you guys have the power. But, you know, to, I don't know what to mention. I didn't get a chance to really review the recommendations in, I saw in writing earlier. Uh, some of them are no problem. Some of them, Maybe problem with like raising raising a a wall obviously shouldn't be a problem. We want to finish the concrete side and all surfaces of the garage so that it will be weatherproof and paint it with a sealant. Um, but are, are those details really necessary to discuss with DRP as opposed to with the county? I would think that if you look at the drawings, you can see we should have bought a little bit of good faith as far as trying to make something that's really stands out. Nothing of this beauty is available in Pikesville that I've seen. We're talking Owings Mills or Hunt Valley quality. 
as opposed to the current look, which is it's terrible. And I'm, I apologize, it's taken us eight years to get a bank to be willing to finance this. We finally have that. Um, I don't want to drag this out another year or so um, and have the bank, you know, withdraw their their offer of funding. If there are any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. John, may I um, come back to that? Sure. Right. So, I mean, we are charged with reviewing not by only our design um, backgrounds, but also by the guidelines. And when we look at the the requirements and the guidelines, it talks specifically about high quality, durable materials and masonry and EFIS is, um, you know, it's it's a very, it suggests a very limited use of that and, and it requires that if used, details emulate um, the natural materials. And I don't think that's being achieved. So, well, and, you know, and when, when we ask about the paint on the garage, it's from a standpoint of weatherability. When we don't have that information, um, it's hard to, uh, you know, say we approve, approve the plan because we know from our experience as design professionals, you paint concrete um, and it's going to peel and not weather well because you're adding a material to uh, concrete that may not last. Um, so all those are concerns and uh, you know kind of directly go back to the guidelines that are in place to ensure that there's a quality um, environment i do think that again some of the moves are are successful on this building but when comparing it to the previous submission that was proposed and submitted um, by the developer to a previous panel and there may be some current uh, members that were there at the time but I think it has changed since then, and um, I think that's what we're we're reviewing. I appreciate that. We took the flags off the building. I think that was something that the prior DRP meeting they didn't like, and certain additional elements. And we thought just simplifying it, making it look clean and crisp and beautiful. With if you don't like glass, you're not going to like this building. If you don't like granite, you're not going to like this building. But those are the elements that we thought looked beautiful on this corner, which is just when somebody turns into the Pikesville um, redevelopment area, this is the first thing they're going to see, and we thought it would be very inviting. Uh, so as a member of the panel who was on the prior panel since I had, this is my second stint on the design review panel with the gap. Uh, I think the earlier submission uh, came back at least two times. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know what went through at that time. I know in my own case, and this is to the panel members. Uh, you know, I'm. I agree with Cecily about the there are features of the earlier design that probably were were better help with some of the scale of the building. Uh, also been in a situation with the economy uh, and having to value engineer uh, considering the quality of what they proposed here my tendency for the Ricerstown Road building would be to approve it as submitted in this presentation but I think the garage you know which really isn't we don't really have in my opinion a complete presentation in terms of understanding what it's going to look like uh, in terms of visual, uh, because there are a lot of different types of coatings. There's a lot of coatings that have textures to them uh, that can make the concrete look better or worse, depending on what's selected. Uh, and I know at the prior presentation, the pylon sign generated a lot of controversy. The fact that that's being eliminated, uh, you know, eliminates one concern I know the community had at that time. Uh, so my comment to the panel is I, I tend to my tendency would be to approve the main building, but again, that's up to the panel to, to hash out among ourselves uh, in terms of this motion. John, this is Matt. I have a question for you. Is it the um, the paint, the coating of the garage that 
is most concerning to you? Is that something that could be resolved without them having to come back or is it more than that to you? Uh, you know, if, if they could submit a wall section of the garage so we really understood the relationship of the planes of the different materials, what the reveals look like and the wall cap, uh, I think the they could submit some paint coatings and that's probably something that could be done at the staff level with maybe some individual consultation in terms of the quality of the product with members of the panel. Uh, I don't think that would necessarily have to come back. Uh, I think as it relates to the garage, I think the landscape plan, if the panel agrees, could go the same way. Uh, but you know, I think I would want that have review by the person or some assistance in that review by the person who made the comment. Uh, but again, we, you know, we have some flexibility as a panel to decide, you know, what happens moving forward. Well, I can tell you from my perspective where I feel most qualified to comment on you know, the site, the streetscape, the landscape, those kinds of things. And I feel like adding you know, Joe's comment about having a colored plan because it's hard to see. But I think if they did that, they labeled things, clearly noted widths of sidewalks, and the width of the planting areas, um, confirm existing transfer wall to remain, how tall it is, or whether it's going to be replaced. And, you know, as, as staff said, you know, details for the um, dumpster wall. Um, to me, you know, most of those things are addressing the streetscape and how this is going to feel from a pedestrian point of view uh, from people across the street. I feel like those things can be handled um, by addressing them and sending them to staff. And if staff looks like they need to run some things by, by us or by me, I'm happy to do that. I feel less qualified on all of the architecture things you guys are commenting on. So um, more to you and Cecily and others on that. Any other comments by anybody in the panel? Um, th this is Joe again. I, I, I think the building and we'll continue to say the building I think looks nice. I wasn't around for 2012. Um, I can't tell what the garage is gonna look like. Um, and the uh, non-colored plans are very tough to read. So I, I think, uh, in my opinion, that we can approve the building, or at least I can approve the building, and uh, ask for um, the garage and the colored rendering uh, to come back. This is Kelly. I, I agree with Joe. I think those coming back with those two pieces would fill in some of the holes that are being missed. Any other discussion comment from people from the uh, panel? Hi, this is Hyun. Um, I also personally, I didn't see the 2012 submission, but I personally don't have any problems with the building itself, except for its relationship to the pedestrian level, like the some shading, which I, I think from a price point of view will be pretty minimal. Um, I think there's some annotations and clarifications visually on what is actually being proposed um, for the garage and, and especially the, the street. Um, level relationship to the residential side, Irving, I think. Um, I think that will be very helpful and that could be the part that comes back. Um, personally, the building, I do not, um, I'm okay approving it personally. Thank you. So Cecily, so it appears as if you and I have a, a, a disagreement here. Uh, are you amenable to amending Amend, amending, uh, amending that motion. Well, I understand that. If I could just, if we're following Robert's rules, there's a motion on the table. 
So that would have to get a second and then a vote, and then you can make a new motion. Yeah, and before we, we move to that, um, I'll just uh, address John's. It does sound like the remainder of the panel is okay with the, the architecture. Um, I, you know, I, I think if you zoom in on those tower elements and understand from an architecture standpoint that all of those lines and the frame are just carved out of EFIS, um, you might feel differently about how those large elements are being articulated and how, um, you know, um, styrofoam co covered by synthetic stucco does not emulate uh, and reflect some of the criteria that I see in the design guidelines for the area. Um, I, you know, I'm happy to be overruled and outvoted. I will stand um, and, and still think that that's an important element, especially with the height of these towers and visibility. But I will uh, let you move on to uh, to the vote, John. Okay. So, based on Jennifer's reference to Robert's rule of order, uh, do we have a second for Cecily's motion? <laughs> okay. So with that, what I propose is to amend the motion that we accept the comments as proposed by the staff, that the multi-story building on Ricerstown Road be approved as submitted, that the developer provide a rendered landscape plan addressing the connectivity issues uh, on Ricerstown, Irving, and Slade, as well as rendered elevations for the parking garage, including a wall section accurately describing the detailing on the garage elevations. Is there a second? This is Joe Yusufero. I second that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. okay let's take our vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Nay. Cecily, okay. nay. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Oh, wait, uh, 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 excuse me one second. So I need, we need to count because there's two no's. <laughs> Who voted yes? This is the, okay. the project is coming back to staff or is it coming back for another meeting? I'm not clear. <laughs> okay. So let's go back. Okay. We're gonna work to make it clear on the roll. Uh, I voted aye. Miss Bedwell was Nay. no. Matt? Aye. Miss Ennis? Aye. Miss Ra? Aye. Miss Sauce? Aye. Mr. Yusufero? Aye. Aye. I heard two no's. So did I hear incorrectly or? <clears throat> Jennifer, I think you may have heard me saying nay, and then I, I clarified that it was myself speaking. And okay. <clears throat> My apologies. So, so the, the building has been approved. The garage and the landscape plan have to come back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So and moving John, on to our last. Clear, just to be clear, you still, uh, your motion still included the county staff comments, correct? 
it, they did. Okay, with that, we can now move on to our third presentation, which is 9925 Berg River Drive. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a long meeting so far. Uh, this seems to be potentially a complicated uh, project to review. I would ask the developer to keep their comments as brief and as succinct as possible. Uh, I know I have one question that I would like the developer as part of their presentation to answer uh, because it, it looks like we have a presentation for the site development and we also have the pattern book. Uh, from staff standpoint, are we reviewing those as two separate items or as one combined item? Uh, that would be one combined item. I do believe that majority of the site plan information is within the pattern book. And I believe that is for the majority of what is done, the presentation is what is covered. Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. Okay. And from the developer standpoint, uh, the design panel has had this material for over a week. Uh, so we all have had the benefit of looking at this coming into tonight's meeting. And with that, I'll turn it over to our presenter. And John, before you proceed, Matt and I will need to recuse ourselves. Understood. And since this is the last uh, of tonight and I've got to recuse myself, I hope you guys don't mind if I, um, I'll sign off. Is that okay, Jennifer? You have we you have our permission. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Who is that speaking? Was that Joe? Uh, Matt D'Amico. Oh, okay, Matt, got you. And also, this is Marta. I would like to mention so the this presentation includes the site plan. If we need to zoom in during the presentation, we can do that. Very good. Uh, who is giving the presentation for this project? That would be me, John Domena. This is Jason Vittori. Uh, good evening, Chairman Domena and uh, PRP panelists. This is Jason Vittori with Smith, Gilday, and Schmidt. David Gilday is also here from our firm. Um, for the developers, we have Neil Greenberg, the COO of Somerset Construction Company, and Tom Pilon, from, uh, the Senior Vice President from St. John Properties. And Cecily Bedwell is the architect with Principal Design Collective, our civil engineers, Aaron Kenzinger uh, with Central Engineering, and our landscape architects, Devin Leary, and with Human Rody. With that, I am going to turn it over to Neil Greenberg if he has been unmuted to give some brief comments from the developer. Yes, hi. Um, good evening. Um, this is Neil Greenberg. I'm with Somerset Construction Company. I'm one of the developers of the Spiegel property provide a brief overview and history of the Spiegel property. I would like to thank the DRP committee members for taking time for their families and volunteering and volunteering their valuable time to help in elevating the quality of development in Baltimore County. So really, thank you. Well, we strive to only provide quality development and a very talented professional team to and have charged them with helping to design a high quality community at the Spiegel property, and we hope that you are pleased with um, what we would like to develop at the Spiegel property. Um, when we discussed our planning property, um, we worked with the larger community and obtained broad community support for what is being presented tonight. Um, first of the familiar with the development being done at the Greenlee community. And we agreed to a Greenlee level of quality, but due to the size of the Spiegel property versus the extremely large size of the Greenlee property, it was agreed that the Spiegel property would be laid out as a cul-de-sac type development instead of a neo-traditional development on a grid, which is what we have in Greenlee. 
Um, agree that there were additional architectural features on lots facing Campbell Boulevard. Get a pain, um, um, you know, wi widespread community support. The Spiegel property is 55.7 acres. It's zoned DR 3.5 with a small sliver of DR 2. Um, the Euclidean density would permit 216 homes. And what we are pro proposing tonight is 89 homes. Um, the, the, there's a significant loss of um, permissible density, and that was part of our, you know, discussions with the community on um, what collectively we felt would be best for the community. Um, our open space requirement is two acres, and we're providing uh, 4.17 acres. Uh, the community wanted a um, we're building, paying for a public park to county standards that will be dedicated to the county and administered, run by the county rec council. Um, uh, approximately 30% of the site will be permanently protected in environmental easements. Um, the forest conservation requirements are being met on site. The stormwater management requirements are being met on site. And again, to keep it brief, we hope you're pleased um, with what we are proposing. And with that, um, we're going to turn it over to our professional team. And, and before we get to them, I just want to, we're on sheet two, and obviously you can see the intersection of Campbell Boulevard and Bird River Road as identified as picture number one, and two is Campbell Boulevard northbound. That's really north eastbound from the site where Campbell Boulevard runs through. And if we could skip ahead to the next exhibit, get a better context of where that is. I'll try to go through these quickly if whoever's changing exhibits can do so. Number on two, if we could go to three. Okay. We talked about the zoning. It's predominantly DR 3.5. You can see it above the site. There's some slivers of DR 2 to the right and then below Campbell Boulevard. You could go on to the next exhibit. I think we've covered what the zoning is. This is where Campbell Boulevard bisects the site. Um, the number one is where Bird River Road is. That picture you saw on the prior on, on sheet number two. And number two is the northeast picture you saw. We go to the next exhibit, please. And this is just disgusting, as uh, Neil pointed out, the uh, existing conditions, as you can see from that last exhibit, uh, there's significant environmental constraints and the project was designed to accommodate those. The next exhibit, please. These are a number of developments that are located uh, in the vicinity of where our property is highlighted in blue. Without delaying, if we could skip to the next exhibit showing some of what those ex developments look like. So you have Sherman's Enclave one, and I won't read all of them to you. I'm sure you've looked at it. So get an idea of what kind of housing product there is around us and the other residential developments. If you can skip to the next exhibit, please. These are some more contextual images. Campbell Boulevard looking north. This is where on our site, right where Campbell Boulevard bends from the northwest up towards the northeast. You can see where the future park will be. Uh, Bird River Road on Cable Boulevard. This goes on to Pulaski Highway. The second image, the third image is, is to the northeast. And then just we have a picture showing where the bike lanes are in the road and then sidewalks outside of that. Next image, please. And then I think we can go past nine to 10. I think Neil talked about preserving open space and all these other issues we've highlighted here in this narrative. You can go to number 10, please. Illustrative plan here. And uh, as we get into the plan, obviously the engineer can talk more about it with respect to the landscaping or landscape architect and talk about what's been proposed. But you can see as Campbell Boulevard runs south, it runs into where the park is going to be. Um, and then we have a number of units. And I think the next few exhibits give a better context of how the roads and, uh, and paths work. So if we can skip to the next exhibit. This one shows the orange or kind of reddish of the uh, blocks indicates the single family dwellings that are rear loaded or the corner lots. There's two of them right where it says Campbell Boulevard and there's two standalone lots um, as it turns northwest or north. In between the two 
rear loaded corner lots along Campbell Boulevard to the left side of this illustration. You have single family front rear loaded. In the next exhibit, you'll see that there's an, uh, an alley there. And then obviously, and that's indicated by the dotted line and the residential streets are in the solid red line, not the dotted line. And if we can look at the next exhibit, I think this one shows not the streets and alleys, but the kind of natural areas, screening areas, the entry landscapes, which uh, Mr. Leary is going to talk about. The pedestrian routes are along both sides of Campbell Boulevard, and the pedestrian routes, you can see from the right side, it comes behind those two standalone lots to the park. And then there <coughs> are two crossings, one from the main entrance to the, the, the development to the left, where the entry landscape is and one closer to the call to set from the furthest to the right um, on the left side there. So if we could go to the next exhibit, please. I think this is the site plan. And again, if you have any questions about the site plan and you know what existing conditions are present, uh, we can address those when you have questions later. With that, I think the next exhibit, I believe, it's in the architecture, the landscape plan. And I think Mr. Leary is going to talk about this exhibit, if that's correct, Mr. Bedwell. Thank you, Jason. Yes, this is uh, Devin Leary with Human and Rody. So the, the slide you have in front of you is the uh, schematic landscape plan. And so as you can see, we have Campbell Boulevard, which bisects our property. And so really the, uh, the landscape elements are street people on Campbell. Street trees along the internal uh, public roads. Um, we also have a screening of rear, you know, rear orientation and side views to the public view. Uh, we have uh, some planting to define open space areas. Uh, there's several stormwater management uh, facilities throughout the property, which will be appropriately planted. Um, as Neil stated before, there's a substantial amount of forest conservation on site. <coughs> So that'll be placed in the forest conservation easement. And uh, this plan you know, does, uh, in my opinion, meet the uh, Baltimore County landscape manual requirements. So if we move to the next slide, please. So, so this is the only condition where we have a uh, rear, rear yards facing uh, the public right way. And so we have nine units along Campbell Boulevard. And as you can see on the section below, there's a substantial area for space between the right of way and the rear of the, the proposed dwellings. Uh, so the average is about 150 feet or so. And we're proposing some, uh, some slight berming uh, and some substantial planning, which we think will effectively screen these rear lots. If we can move to the next slide, please. So this is just a slide representing the active open space, which again, which was previously discussed, the park uh, will be owned and operated, maintained by Baltimore County. Um, it's obviously important that we have connections to the park from our development. So we're proposing a pedestrian connection across Campbell Boulevard. Uh, we also have an internal connection, which is top right-hand side of, of the slide, the render slide. You can see there's a pedestrian way which comes off of the, uh, the public roadway up at the next one. I guess if we go to the next slide, please. So the, the next few slides are just a representative of the palette, uh, which will be primarily native and adaptive species. Uh, we do have a limitation with our proximity to Martin State Airport. Uh, so we do have uh, some MAA restrictions. However, we think there's substantial opportunity to, to provide uh, you know, an adequate palette. So just some, you know, major trees, river birch, you know, Princeton elm, plane tree, uh, one in plane. And the, the next slide is just some canopy trees. Uh, there are some understory trees, you know, just uh, an evergreens. So just a, a brief example, some shrubs, native shrubs, native adaptive shrubs and a sampling of perennials and grasses that we'd like to use throughout the site. So that's just a brief description of the landscaping. I'm sure if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them at the end. I'll pass it to Cecily. Thank you, Devin, and good evening, um, panelists. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, so the pattern book um, was put together by Design Collective for um, the developers. And 
Importantly, the, the Spiegel Pattern Book um, is a complete guide to the design and development for the single family home development. Um, it covers, as I'll go over, uh, many elements of design and all development, um, all building, all structures, all landscape must comply. The intent is to make sure that um, the, the vision for the development is uh, known to folks who are, are going to be building homes and you know, installing landscape and installing signage, lighting, et cetera. Um, Importantly, the, uh, the pattern book lays out a review process, and that review process is for the Spiegel Property Oversight Committee as master developers will review all submissions uh, for compliance to the pattern book. And um, other than uh, there is some discretion on, um, on the criteria noted within, however, any um, derivations from the criteria has to be based on unusual programmatic requirements, particular site or lot constraint, or um, warranted architectural design merit. Um, the only things that are exceptions to that um, that cannot be changed are, of course, the setbacks, which would have to go through the county, and as well as the criteria for corner lots. Next page. So briefly, um, the table of contents, just quickly to outline, um, as mentioned, we cover site design, street design, landscape design, architectural design, and signage design. And then the review process is um, written out within this document as well to ensure that submissions have full documentation for review. Lastly, is the um, in the appendix is the list of modifications for the Baltimore County um, standards. Next page. So here you see just an example. Um, this is a stream down. You had uh, the full pattern book to review. Um, you can thank me later <laughs> for that. Apologies in advance or, or following that. Um, but here you can just see um, some of the detail of the lot plans that show the setbacks. Um, and in the list of modifications are just the, the few minor uh, revisions to the county standards. Um, we do have particular requirements or different requirements for corner lots um, and those that are fronting Campbell Boulevard per the discussions that Neil made um, and had conversations with the surrounding community. Um, so we've abided by uh, the promises made and documented those within the pattern book. Next slide. Okay, here you see just um, a, a guide for those lot types. So the criteria are governed um, by the position of these lots. So uh, this is a, a key plan, if you will, that then has the criteria linked to it. Next, next slide. Here you can see some of the uh, requirements for those um, prominent lots, those that from, um, Campbell Boulevard, uh, those that are corner lots within the development as well. Um, so there are re um, additional requirements for those that front Campbell Boulevard or sit on corner lots and they're enumerated. And I'll show share at the end how we're exceeding the typical um, county requirements um, significantly in this development looking for quality development. Next slide. We also talk about uh, streets. So within that, the, the uh, aim is to have complete streets that not only serve vehicles, but pedestrians and cyclists. Um, so with that, um, you can go on to the next slide. Um, the streets are broken down into zones, zones of use. So we have um, the areas where the buildings at the periphery of the street are the buildings that help to define uh, the zone of the street, the streetscape. A pedestrian zone is important and we have minimum requirements for sidewalk width. Um, tree zone also important um, to ensure that there are tree lined streets within this residential development and there's sufficient room for the trees selected by Devon and shown on the landscape plan to grow and thrive. Um, parallel parking for essentially visitor parking, but it's supplementing also um, homeowner parking and then the travel lanes. If you go to the next slide, we can take a look at um, 
the street design here. And you'll notice that um, in the center is a shared lane. Um, this will help to uh, mitigate traffic speeds and uh, create that residential street character that we're, we are aiming for meeting um, Baltimore County uh, standards and manuals, but creating that environment that creates a nice walkable uh, tree lined residential street and residential character. Next slide. Um, here you see a street section of the alley, um, not as dynamic, but uh, very functional and allowing for access to those rear loaded lots uh, that Devin and um, Jason noted in the plan. Next slide. Um, we do talk about uh, the street trees, so we do have a full palette that adheres to the Baltimore County um, manual, as well as the MAA um, requirements for proximity to Martin State Airport. And we've also looked further at native and adaptive and through all those filters came up with the street uh, tree uh, palette here and have um, denoted the autumn blaze as the preferred tree for for the street trees within along the residential streets and then other site trees would be from the full palette. We also have indicated and shown here the selected light fixture for the um, the street lights that will line the residential streets. Those are the same. And in fact, this picture is from Greenlee, but it's the same um, light fixture that was, was approved for that development. Next slide. Uh, landscape plans are shown here. So this is um, the requirements that the uh, builder will be held to both um, conforming to the palette that I just mentioned, as well as the placement on the lot. So you can see it's a, a fairly um, rich um, placement of plant material on each of the individual lots. Next slide. The um, architectural criteria go into quite some detail um, and um, detail everything from materials, uh, the configuration of those materials, as well as the finishing and construction techniques of those materials. Um, we talk about, for example, building walls, doors, windows, roofs, uh, porch elements, um, and even rear, rear yard. Um, and uh, back deck materials as well. Next slide. Um, here's just a sampling of the windows and doors talking about alignments and the style of the windows and the materiality of the windows that are uh, required within Spiegel. Again, assuring that the quality that was intended is followed through on. Next. Uh, sign types and materials, although the signs um, will be somewhat limited to entry monuments and the street signs, we do have a section within the pattern book that governs the quality of materials, um, placement, and similar for the signs within Spiegel. Next slide. And here I'll just um, go through some of the, um, the elevations and plans um, that we are looking at for the Spiegel property. Um, and, and to note, we have reviewed these, um, Design Collective has reviewed these per the pattern book criteria, and there are notations where they are, there are modifications required, such as, for example, uh, the depth of the porches, we require a minimum six foot depth for all front porches. Um, so we've reviewed these for compliance, and I'll point out there are, are several types here including the front load and the rear load um, versions. And we can go to the next slide. Okay, again, here's a front load, um, one of the models that's envisioned at Spiegel and a front load. And the next slide shows a rear load configuration with a garage in the back served off an alley. Next slide. Um, and this is another front load. Um, so that will give you a good sense of the architecture that is envisioned for Spiegel. And if we go to the next page, I'll share with you what, um, how we evaluated. Oh. Sorry, and I, I, I missed, there was one, there's one additional rear load here. So we can move on to the, the next slide. 
And so we did go through the exercise of evaluating um, the criteria and con um, comparing it to section 260 in the county code, 260.6, and showing how uh, the number of elements that we are requiring at Spiegel um, exceed, and sometimes exceed dramatically the number of elements that are typically required um, in this type of development. Um, for example, um, for the frontage side elevations, where six elements are required, and those can be things like dormers, um, uh, window number of windows, et cetera. Six are required, and per the criteria in the pattern book, um, a minimum of 11 would need to be provided in, at Spiegel. Next slide. Okay, and this is a similar exercise, um, but for the um, the side ele the interior side elevations, so not the frontage, but the interior side elevations. And here you can see again, and not to the same extent, but uh, per the county's regulations, five elements are required, and we're exceeding that uh, by one. So a minimum again, a minimum of six would be required per the pattern book criteria. Next slide. I just share with you um, the Envision materials um, for Spiegel, and there's a whole series of these, so I'm just going to point out um, these all do again meet the criteria, such as um, dark neutral colors for shutters and doors, um, a palette of um, the stone veneer that um, that is consistent and reflects what would be naturally found on site, uh, the brick. Um, is all of a type that's um, a, a molded brick with, although it's not shown here, there's a note that the mortar would need to be um, a, a neutral color rather than cool gray. Um, the shingle color, again, uniform. And then um, you can see the, the siding, which again has a note on it. While the color is reflective, um, it will be a cementitious siding at Spiegel. All right, so we'll go through a series of these. Um, Marta, you can just flip through these. They're just the various color schemes that have been compiled to show what the varying units uh, would have on them. And I'll point out as you flip through that, we also do have a right requirement that there be no duplications in color palettes within two doors down the street, across the street, or around the corner. So there would be another layer of variety in addition to the different facades um, of the unit types, but there'd be a variety of the colors and materials used on the buildings. And I believe that is, concludes the presentation. Cecily, thank you very much. Uh, very detailed, very thorough, not surprised. Uh, and, I, and I hope I, I sped through it fast enough for you, John. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm less concerned about me than I am everybody else on the meeting. Uh, I've been consuming vast quantities of iced tea, so I might regret it at two o'clock this morning. Uh, before we move on to the public comment uh, part of the meeting, uh, Jennifer does want to uh, address a couple of items uh, to uh, the panel and those in attendance. Uh, thank you, John. Yes, hi, this is Jennifer Nugent, and so I'm the Chief of Development Review Division, which we are managing the design review panel, and um, myself and Marta and other staff, you know, we, we coordinate these meetings for you all. We are also in charge of reviewing, on behalf of the Department of Planning, all development um, that comes through our agency for review. There are, um, as you all know, specific mapped areas throughout the county that are subject to uh, the design review panel. Um, it was in the 2008 um, comprehensive zoning map process that this area of Middle River was created as a design review panel area. Um, it is not very often that a major subdivision does come before this panel, because as required by law, that is why the project is here before you tonight. To explain the process for people that 
aren't aware, um, this major subdivision was brought before uh, the county reviewing agencies in a concept plan format. After the concept plan, it had a community input meeting where um, the developer presented to the community in a public forum and they received comments and feedback from the community. Um, and then now, as it's written into the, the code, the uh, project is nearing the development plan submission phase of the approval process from the county. It has to be presented before the DRP. So simultaneous to you all reviewing the uh, site landscape plans as well as the pattern book, which are all very important components of design of what you're charged with reviewing. The planning department um, is also reviewing it for similar components and assuring that the development plan meets the sections of the zoning regulations of residential performance standards, which is section 260 of the zoning code. So the majority of what Cecily has presented is meeting that requirement. Um, where it goes from here all and how you all render your decision all goes then um, to the administrative law judge who takes everything into consideration in rendering his um, order for approval of the development plan. So I just kind of wanted to uh, present that for everybody who wasn't sure of you know what we were exactly looking for here. I know it's it's a lot to take in um, it being a major subdivision, but I I would probably suggest that the general overall design elements, the the pedestrian access, landscape, lighting, um, circulation, and um, overall architectural um, concepts be considered. So just wanted to put that in front of you all as you're hearing from the public. Um, we do also have a residential reviewer um, that we neglected to introduce. So I'll let Marta do that. And then if we have anybody signed up to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nugent. We don't have anyone uh, who signed up to speak, at least what I see from the chat window. Jan, do you have anyone? I do not as well. Okay, Jan, looks like we don't have anyone uh, from public who wish to speak today for this project. So, Marta, who is the residential reviewer for this area? Uh, uh, Mr. Glenn. Okay. He's, he's, he's here today. Okay, so then uh, I guess before Mr. Glenn, because we'll have the residential reviewer lead off uh, as we typically do when there's a residential reviewer. Uh, but before we do that, uh, do you want to go through the staff comments? Sure, thank you, John. Um, can you hear me okay? John? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I can. Thank you. So, um, the Department of Planning has reviewed the proposal for conformance with the following. Comprehensive manual of development policies, Middle River Community Plan, Windless Run, Bird River Area Community Plan, Baltimore County Landscape Manual, Baltimore County Zoning Regulations Section 260, and the Master Plan 2020. Um, in regard to site design, staff recommends approval of the site design. If re in regards of form and image, staff recommends approval of the form and image. In regards to open space and landscape design, uh, staff recommends approval of the open space and landscape design subject to the following condition. Clearly label on the plan and in the pattern book the proposed path that is intended to provide a connection from the adjacent residences to the public park. In regards of streets, parking, and circulation, a staff recommend approval of the streets, parking, and circulation. In regards of signage and lighting, um, 
Staff recommends approval of the signage and lighting subject to the following condition. Indicate if the proposed signage will be eliminated. And in regards to the architectural design, uh, staff recommends approval of the architectural design subject to the following condition. Provide window features in all garage doors. This should be illustrated and labeled in the pattern book. And this concludes our staff report. Thank you, Marta. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Yusufara, would you like to go first? Typically, we hear from the residential reviewer first. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my, my mistake. Uh, I apologize. Uh, That's okay. <sighs> So I believe that's Mr. That would Glenn. Be Mr. Glenn. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, as a resident in the area, I have to admit, um, I actually saw this several times uh, with uh, the developer coming through the um, Civic Council. Um, and so far, everything I've seen was well presented, and it has pretty much everything that the community meetings had and everything that, um, that was suggested in this area. Um, I have no really other uh, questions or negatives um, other than as long as this gets approved uh, with the park and the things that were mentioned, um, I am okay with it. Very good. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. This is your first visit with us and thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you. Hopefully we'll be seeing you again. <laughs> uh, with that, now we'll go to Mr. Yusuf Arrow. All right. Uh, good evening, or, or is it is it good morning? I, I can't tell. Um, so I, I would agree uh, with Mr. Glenn, um, really to the entire development team. Uh, thank you for the thoughtful and very very detailed uh, presentation. Uh, clearly, the quality is is much higher uh, than that of a of a typical normal development. Um, overall, well done, and I, I have no uh, further comments. Okay. Uh, Ms. Saws? I think the presentation was uh, very well communicated, and uh, the efforts to meet this, the uh, required standards is, and go above and beyond is, is great. Uh, and they're first time. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Ra? Uh, hello. Um, yeah, I agree with the others in complimenting you on the very high quality presentation. Um, my biggest concern was the stormwater management, because as you know, this is in a very flood prone area, but it seems that you have addressed all of those um, very thoughtfully. Uh, one thing I'm still wondering about is elevations of some of the garages that were um, presented in the pattern book. Um, just wondering if the flood risk again has been considered for the location of those units in the various parts of the site. So that was just a question that I had uh, for the designers and the developer. Um, another thing was, um, as you again probably know, I'm sure, this is in a um, in one of the most vulnerable areas for sea level rise in within Baltimore County, uh, with six feet of sea level rise expected in the next thirty years. So, um, with that in mind, and with Maryland uh, as a state pushing forward for renewable energy, I was also curious to know if, um, in terms of electricity generation and supply. If that's been in any um, of the, your discussions or thought process, as I imagine this is planned for longer than 30 years as a community. I think specifically to those points, if Aaron Kinsinger, can you respond just briefly? And I don't know if we have an exhibit that shows the plans that have a little bit more of the stormwater management you know, articulated for, as Ms. Nugent said, you know, when we go through the development process, obviously. Department of Environmental Protection has looked at all those things already, has issued you know, a certain amount of comments, and we are going to address all those things. But with that, Mr. Kensinger, can you address those comments, questions? Aaron, 
Aaron, if we can't hear you. Um, How about now? Yes. Uh, so let me start over. This is Aaron Kent here with Century Engineering. We did the stormwater management analysis for this site. The exhibit on the screen is a good one to look at. Uh, you can identify four total light green areas, which are the proposed stormwater management features. Uh, stormwater management will be addressed through both structural practices, which is these four areas, and also non-structural practices, such as uh, sheet flow runoff from the rooftops across the backyards, which qualify for credits per the state regulations. Uh, all of those were factored in. With respect to your question uh, about sea level rise, this site runs from the low side of an elevator to around 60, and then on the high side, you're around 120 uh, feet in elevation. So you're well above um, that elevation. So that is not a concern on this site. And all stormwater management criteria at the state and county level are being addressed. I, I, this is Neil. Uh Jason, um, could I could I address the um, the um, solar aspects that were brought up? Sure, why not? Um, because these are single family homes, and we're not going to be living in them. We really leave that to the homeowner to decide <laughs> if they um, if if they want solar or not. And uh, obviously, we encourage it. Just down the street at the Greenlee community, um, we do have solar on some of our multifamily projects, and we've been building everything to um, to a gold standard. So all of our multifamily down the street is is gold, and um, our office buildings are silver and gold. The newest ones being gold, but in a single family home, um, we can't. We really don't. You know, absent a change in the law, we, we can't really mandate. We can't mandate it, but we can encourage. Okay. Um, the building systems, though, are you following the other projects that you just mentioned to a gold and silver standard or? Well, we're, we're, we're not going to be building these homes. Th these homes will be built by a, um, by a builder. Um, for, for sale to a homeowner as opposed to product that we will keep okay. and own, you know, for long term ownership. So these okay. are not rental homes. These are going to be for sale and, you know, they'll be offered with, you know, solar and, and other items like that. But um, um, we won't mandate it. Okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, I had a few qu questions, but uh, comments, but others on the panel have already addressed those. Uh, like the other uh, members of the panel, I think the this is a very uh, well thought out as well as well presented uh, site design as well as pattern book. Uh, with that, uh, are do any of which of our, our board members would like to make a motion? Joseph, I'm going to volunteer you. How's that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So I, I do have one uh, question to the developer. Um, in the staff report, um, <laughs> staff recommends window features in all garage doors. I, I assume it is against what was said in the pattern book uh is is that going to be a challenge for the developer to address hi this is neil greenberg again so in our in our apartments we actually do include glass in the garage doors so we we've agreed to that it's it's not a problem it's it's uh it's an appropriate upgrade um so it's something we've accepted Especially very happy. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and Neil, I'll add on to that. In the pattern book, Joe, we have um, front loaded garages are required to have the glass. Um, we did not require it for the rear loaded because those really, you know, they they face an alley. Uh, so we didn't think that that would be that would be kind of above and beyond. But 
if Neil's okay with accepting that term, uh, that's fine. We just didn't think it was vital. Um, we did think it was a, a good design feature on the front load, but the rears, rear loaded garage doors aren't really visible to anyone except for those pulling into their garages. Understood. Thank you very much. Um, so, so, Joe, so, so, Joe, when you when you make the motion, I would do like we did in the prior presentation. We can reference the uh, staff comments as a universal comment. Understood. Understood. So, so, Chairman Demet, I'd like to make a motion to approve the project uh, conditioned upon the staff report dated January 13th, 2021 from the Department of Planning. Do we have a second? This is Kelly. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion calories. Uh, development team, designers, I think it was an excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, a very good way to end this meeting's meeting, unless Anyone has any other further items? Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? This is Joe Yusufero again. I'll I'll make a motion to it. I'll, I'll gladly make a motion to adjourn. I was going to nominate you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, meetings adjourned. Thank you all, everybody. Go have a nice glass of wine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.